On this episode, we are talking about the courage to keep going. We're gonna sit down with Jessica and dive straight into it. Come join us on The Courage Chronicles. Let's get into it. Hi there, my name is Connor Kern, and I'm one of the co-owners of Local Laundry. Come join me on The Courage Chronicles, where we interview different people on their area of expertise and how they became successful and how you can learn from their success. Welcome back to another episode of The Courage Chronicles. We're here today with none other than Jessica Jansen. Last episode, we talked about the joys of community in Calgary. Now, this episode, Jessica, what I'd love to talk about is a moment of courage that you experienced that along your journey that has led you to where you are today. Mm. And we, and we just quickly talking before the camera started rolling about like, you know, what were you gonna talk about? And I'm like, Wah. but this one instance sticks out in my mind and I think it has played into how I show up in my business. Um, and that's like being relentless and not taking no as an answer. And so we started a charity foundation. I am gonna go there. because Yes, think yes, that, no, of I course. think it's important and it, it, it's tied in because it's, been a constant reminder that timelines usually don't always happen in the way that we want them to and that you have to be relentless and you have to be loud to get things done and yeah. to make it happen whatever goal it is that you're setting so we had this idea um, our son passed away from a rare genetic disease at Alberta Children's Hospital in Rotary Flames and after we stayed in touch with our pediatric neurologist Dr. Jean Ma she is an angel sent from the heavens above doing incredible work and we had talked about like just as Lewiston was getting diagnosed there was clinical trials but nothing was concrete nothing was approved yet in Canada and shortly after his passing about eight months the um, drugs started to get approved that there wasn't a cure but there was treatment and significantly changing children's lives that if you could detect this disease early enough and they could access treatment um, they were seeing incredible results where kids that were passing away like my son were now able to walk crawl um, breathe on their own like just life-changing and so we were getting together with Dr. Jima and we were saying like wouldn't it be incredible that if you could like detect this at birth so that you would know right away because had we detected Lewiston at birth and we could have accessed treatment or got him on to a clinical trial he might still be here and so we were like how does this work you know starting to understand the medical system and I mean I barely passed high school I would just like to preface that don't even know how I really got through college other than I was relentless I had to rewrite a few exams to like finally get my diploma one of the things is, is that like I am just I have a stick to itiveness to be like okay if I'm gonna do the thing I'm gonna do the thing and so as I started to learn about like how the medical system worked and what needed to happen we discovered every child gets newborn screening and so when a child's born they do a little heel prick normally women who have just delivered a baby are like t I was Delulu like I was out of it and so I don't remember this but I'm like oh right they do this heel prick they collect these little blood dry spots they get sent off to a lab and in Alberta at the time, they were testing for 21 different diseases. A big one would be cystic fibrosis. And Alberta was actually leading the way when newborn screening came to play for cystic fibrosis, and they helped implement that. And then each province does it differently. You'd think that they'd do the same across Canada, but each province does it differently. It's like, what if they could screen for newborn screening? So here was a problem that we had no expertise in. We didn't really have any knowledge in, and we were totally unfamiliar with it. But we felt like we had a solution that could help and benefit others people so I look at this like a business problem it's like you have a solution you kind of see where the problem is um, and maybe you don't have all the expertise and so we're like okay like what do we got to do and so my husband and I just started making phone calls and asking more questions we worked with Dr. Ma like how does it work what has happened and she goes well you need to you know typically run a pilot project and have like a case study to make sure that this is effective and it's um, you know meets efficacy and all of these different things and so we just started asking questions and my husband sent an email almost every week until we could get a meeting um, with the right people to get a pilot project approved. And he was just that consistent. Like if I wanna, if you wanna learn about consistency, go talk to Hot Ronnie, cause that guy, like he writes his list, he lays out his clothes every morning, like he doesn't miss his day with his vitamins, like dialed. And so 
We sent all these emails, did all of this research. We got this pilot project uh, approved and they're like, okay, it'll be half a million dollars. So I was like, okay, great, we'll go find the money. And the hospital was like, we'll do 250 if you can do 250. So we're like, okay, so we started fundraising and doing all of it. And then with Dr. Moss' help, we were able to work with Alberta Health Services and Precision Labs. But I got to be part of what I would call Alberta history and make it happen. And on the first phone calls and the first Zooms that we were doing as we were making this happen, um, people were like, and who are you? And I was like, I'm the mom of a kid who died. Like, I wasn't qualified to be in the room. Um, I wasn't invited. I kind of just made a seat at the table. And I look at that as being the courage to show up, even when you don't have the right qualifications, even when you don't have the expertise, even when they didn't invite you to the table. You have to have the courage to just say, I'm going to pull up a seat at the table and show them why it matters that I'm here. And that is something that I've applied in my own life because I think in business, we can get into our own heads of like, I'm not qualified, I don't have the funds, I don't have the resources, I don't have the expertise. I, um, look at all these people, they have more this, more that. And it's really easy to listen to voices that don't serve you. And that project took us four years. And um, we just got an email yesterday that um, every province, including Quebec, including the Maritimes, including the territories, every province is now screening. And at our event that we did on Saturday for my 40th birthday, a family came up to us and said, um, this is our daughter, her name's Ellie, because of newborn screening, you helped save her life. And so, um, she was detected at birth and is now on treatment. And there's lots more to unpack with that story, but for me, that's the importance of like, it, it was really easy to quit, because I, I was faced with, um, in so many of the meetings, not possible. We don't have budget, we don't have resources, we don't have the manpower. And I just kept on saying, okay, well tell me what we need. And I got curious and I was like, well, go make it happen. I was like, we don't have budget. How much money do you need? I'll pick up the phone and start calling people. Like, if it's important, people will rally behind. And I go back to, this is why I love this community. It's like, when you have a goal or you have something that with deep-seated belief you know needs to happen, this city, this community will help make it happen. And what I've learned time and time again, it's the kindness and the goodness and the generosity of strangers. And it's often the people you least expect yeah. will be the ones that help carry you over the finish line, that will fill the gaps. And I have been blown away by how good this city is. Yeah, it is, it is absolutely incredible. It's a city where if you ask for help, people will help. Mm -hmm. You know, and it can be anything, yeah. right? That's, uh, that's, that's a very powerful story. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you for sharing it. And congratulations! I mean, that's that's a massive milestone to 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 see that you've had that kind of impact, not just on Calgary, or Alberta, but the country as a whole. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling that it's not going to stop there. I would like to give credit where credit is due, and I would say the Alberta Children's Hospital Foundation, SAFA, and their full team there, as well as Dr. Jean Ma, uh, Muscular Dystrophy Canada, and uh, their incredible work and their team. I've never seen, there's a CEO who's a woman who is like paving the way and changing healthcare for children, for adults in the um, muscular dystrophy kind of sphere. I'm incredibly inspired by them and without their skill set and expertise. And then it's our community. It's like we had this crazy idea and I mean, I didn't even know, like, did you know what newborn screening was before you had a kid or the importance of it? Like you just, you don't know what you don't know. And so um, I didn't know the importance of it, but in sharing it with our community and asking for help and for saying, hey, this is a project we want to invest in. It's truly the generosity of our donors and of our volunteers and all of the people around it that gave us the fuel to keep going when it would have been so easy to quit. And for me, that is a reminder of myself of like, look at the courage it took to sit in a room where you weren't invited. Yeah. And for four years, not taking no as an answer. And I'm really damn proud of the work that we accomplished. Yeah, you should be. You know, I love that word, relentless. And mm. I think that's great advice for anyone listening, no matter what aspect in their life, you know, mm. be relentless. Yeah. Because those, those are the people that get stuff done. And yeah. they're the people who are successful is the relentless ones. And you touched upon like being loud and not being afraid to be loud. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with being loud because- Take up space. Take up space. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and be willing to ask for help. Right? If you don't ask, like people want to help, but they just need an avenue. They don't know how to help. 
I do this thing in my keynotes. Uh, I tested it with a group here because I had this idea about, um, we were talking about mental health and you know how do we become resilient. And so often, it's my favorite quote from Lou Holtz, it says, it's not the load that breaks us down, it's the way we carry it. I was like, yup. <laughs> you know what I mean? Really, you're like, this is too hard, this is too heavy, I can't figure it out. And so it's like, well, yeah, you're trying to carry it all on your own or whatever. And so I had um, a team and I invited some people up and I had a few different um, sizes of weights. And I said, if you can hold the, this up for a minute, I'll give you a hundred bucks at a hundred dollar bill. And they're all like, yeah, I can do it. And so they all are holding their weights and you know, the one with the five or 10 pounders. To do this for a full minute is really hard. You know, I had someone with 20 pound weights and none of them can do it. And I stopped them at the end of it. I said, what's interesting, I said, if you can hold the weights up for a minute, I didn't give you any rules, I didn't give you any parameters, none of you asked any questions, and none of you asked for help. And then all of a sudden, people from the audience ran up on stage and said, can we do it again and if we help them hold it up for a minute? And I was like, that's what I want to teach people to do. Yeah. Is it's like, you don't have to do this alone and it's not a single journey. Get community around you and watch the power that when the load is heavy, when it feels impossible, when you don't have courage, maybe they can have courage for you and to keep going in that. And so um, it was a great lesson in being willing to ask for help. Yeah, that is fantastic. If people want to learn more about similar advice and, and hear more stories like this, where, where can they go to find you? Yeah, for sure. You can come find me on my website, jessicajansen.ca, on social media. I love Instagram. That's my favorite platform. LinkedIn, or just shoot me an email, jess at jessicajansen.ca. I'd love to connect. If you have questions um, and want to learn more about our foundation, love for lewiston.ca. All right, that is our third episode on The Courage Chronicles. Coming up, we have our fourth and final episode about how Jessica's work is leaving a lasting impact on the Calgary community as a whole. Stay tuned. A big thank you for watching The Courage Chronicles. If you need that information or you want to be a guest on the show or you know someone who would want to be a good guest on the show, click that link down below or check out YYC Calgary Business or localhonor.ca. Thanks so much. Hope you have a great day. Bye for now.